Hey friends, welcome back to Good Life Farm. So I'm getting ready to go out and do chores. Uh, Mr. Smith is actually in North Carolina visiting family. Our niece is getting married. Um, visiting with our daughter and everybody, his sister, everybody that lives out there. Um, but real quick, before we go out and do chores, I wanted to talk to you about my Thanksgiving plans. I thought I would just take you through what I'm going to make this year. Honestly, most years I make almost exactly the same things every year. Um, sometimes I'll mix things up. I'll make something new to try it out. But for the most part, when our family thinks of Thanksgiving, we have certain things that we think of and nothing is complete without these things. Um, so today is Sunday and this morning I actually went and did all of my Thanksgiving grocery shopping. Took little Miss Willow there with me. Um, got all of the supplies that I needed with the exception of like milk for some of the recipes which we'll just pick that up on Wednesday. But I went and got everything else. So Tuesday, I will go ahead and make my um, brine for the turkey. That way it's completely cooled down when I brine the turkey on Wednesday. Um, so I'm gonna make the brine. I will make my homemade cranberry sauce. I'll go ahead and bake some bread because of course I'm going to need bread for the dressing. And so that way it has a couple of days that I can like let it dry a little bit so that it's not super, super soft. I'll probably go ahead and bake my rolls because they'll still be good on Thursday um, and knock those out. And then I'll go ahead and I'll bake my sweet potatoes for the sweet potato casserole. That way they're already pre-baked and ready to go. Then on Wednesday, that is my big, big, in the kitchen day. Um, even more so, much more so than actual Thanksgiving. Wednesday is when I will bake my pies and I'm just gonna do two different kinds of pies this year. I'm doing my chocolate pie and I'm going to do, of course, pumpkin pie because in this house, it is not Thanksgiving if you don't have pumpkin pie. Um, but I did pick up some pre-made gluten-free crusts um, because unfortunately one of my daughters-in-law is gluten, uh, she has a gluten allergy. Uh, it's not like the by choice paleo kind of thing. She actually has the allergy. So I picked up a couple gluten-free pie crusts. That way she's able to, um, enjoy having dessert as well. I asked her what kind of pie she wanted and she wants the chocolate pie, which is already gluten-free because it's thickened with cornstarch as opposed to flour. So that is super easy um, and I'll be able to make that for her in addition to a regular chocolate pie and a pumpkin pie for everybody. Um, so I'll be making the pies that day and then I'll actually go ahead and make all of my casseroles that day. I'll make my sweet potato casserole. I'll make my cheesy hash brown casserole, which is a kind of a Cracker Barrel copycat recipe. Um, I will make my dressing, um, which I will tell you, it took me years to master the dressing. Um, you know, I used to, a long time ago, I would stuff my turkey and everything, you know, the, the stuffing was fine, but now that I make it as dressing instead, it took, it took several years to get it just right, where it's not too mushy, not too dry, has the right seasoning, and when you take that turkey carcass after Thanksgiving and you make broth and you can that, it comes in very, very handy for making your dressing. So you'll still have that kind of turkey juices sort of flavor in there, but you won't actually have to cook it in the turkey. Um, so I will make my dressing and then I will also make my uh, corn casserole. And last year I kind of played around with it a little bit. I was able to come up with a version that was gluten-free. Um, because one of the big ingredients in there is crushed soda crackers or saltine crackers. Some people go by that. Um, and of course those are not gluten-free, but I figured out a way 
that I could make it with gluten-free matzah instead of the soda crackers. And the texture isn't exactly the same, but it was still close enough. It had all the flavor and everything. And so um, she was able to enjoy that. Um, I also tweaked my sweet potato casserole topping because there is flour that goes into the topping for that. And so I'm able to make a separate dish of that um, with some different topping that uses almond flour. And I think I used potato starch um, instead of regular flour in that. And so again, I'm able to make a gluten-free version of that. Um, what else will I do that day? Oh, and of course I will begin brining the turkey. So that will be brined all day Wednesday, Wednesday night, and then on Thursday I will drain out the brine, rinse the turkey, pat it dry, and prep it to go into the oven. So really the turkey is the big thing that happens on Thursday. Um, while the turkey is going, uh, Mr. Smith always makes giblet gravy. I don't like giblet gravy. Um, so he makes it, he enjoys it, he can have it. <laughs> and then I'll make some mashed potatoes to go with everything because um, he likes to have some mashed potatoes to put his gravy on. Um, but that's pretty much it. The turkey will come out of the oven and then as soon as it comes out, we cover it up, let it rest. I mean, you've got to let your turkey rest anyways before you slice into it. Otherwise, all of those juices just run out and your turkey goes dry. Um, so what we do is we will cover it up with foil and then I put a couple of bath towels over it to just kind of insulate it. And then um, as soon as the turkey comes out, all of my casseroles that I made the day prior, I'll pop into the oven, let them heat all the way through because casseroles are always better the next day anyways. So it does not take anything away from them to make them the day before and then just heat them up when it's time to eat them. And that is basically it. That is kind of our Thanksgiving. Um, I have recipes for, I think, everything except the giblet gravy um, on my website. So if you would like to get any of my recipes, homemade cranberry sauce, which Samantha, Willow's mom, actually asked me yesterday. She's like, are you gonna make your homemade cranberry sauce? And I'm like, absolutely. And she was very happy about that because she said she never liked cranberry sauce until she had mine. But all of those recipes are on my website and I will put a link to all of them uh, down below. So if you are interested in my recipes, uh, you can check those out. I also have a category on my website. If you are on a computer looking at my website, at the very top, there's a little drop down menu and it says something like browse by category or something like that. But if you scroll down through the categories, you will find one that says Thanksgiving and holidays. And all of my Thanksgiving recipes are in that category. So you can browse through them that way. Uh, and if you are on mobile, you can find the category drop down menu at the very bottom of the website. So I am going to throw on my boots, throw on a jacket, and head on out and do afternoon chores. Uh, I'm going to have to haul a little bit of water today because everything's frozen. We've been getting down into the very low temperatures overnight. I think we were probably somewhere around 19 or 20 degrees last night. Uh, needless to say, everything was frozen, so we don't have water hoses hooked up or anything like that, but that's where buckets in a garden cart come in very handy.
Why are you doing? I know what you want. <laughs> Listen here. Hey, quit nipping. Look, look, over here. Sophie. Look at that woolly bear coat. Thank you.